In this video, I'll be exploring some of the conditional formatting options that we've got in the new card visual. Now, there's lots of options to add conditional formatting to the visual, and practically any color of any of these aspects can be impacted by conditional formatting. But specifically, I'm going to be looking at adding conditional formatting to this accent here, and also this icon here. Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. Okay, so I created a video that explains all about the card visual, so I'll leave a link to that below. And this is one of the card visuals that I created. So it's got th four measures on it, and these are the measures here. Each one of these are related to measuring the number of hours in backlog for safety, environment, production, and critical work at a, at a company, at a plant. So this was the, the, the visual that I created. Now, this is the one that we want to actually go and create. Now I want to add some conditional formatting here to draw attention to any of these numbers here if the value is above a given threshold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the steps that I carried out to get from this point here to this point here. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to go into the card option here. And we can see we've got the option to select the card that's related to each one of the measures that we've added. So I'm going to start with this one here, environment. And if we go down and open up some of these, we can see these little FX buttons. Now these are available for pretty much anything, anything that's got a color associated with it. Okay, now any of these, when we see one of these, let's go back to this one here, the border, and we press the FX button, it opens up the option for conditional format here. Okay, now we've got the option for a gradient, we've got the option for rules, where we can set these rules here, and we've got the option here for field values. Now that's what we're going to focus on today, these field values. And that allows us to create a DAX measure that generates a color code that can then be applied to the aspect that we're applying conditional format into. So in this example here, it would be the border. Okay, so if we go to image, we're going to use that same concept for image. Now in this one here, this image here is being uploaded as being 5.png. Okay, so I've just uploaded that and that's the image that's being displayed here. Now there's another option here where we can add an image URL. So that allows us to inject not an uploaded image, but a link to a URL, which is a location for this image. Okay. Now, along with this option here comes this FX button here. So we can actually now create a measure that determines which URL is displayed under certain conditions. So for example, if the threshold or the, the current value for the backlog is above or below a threshold, we can direct it to one of two or three or whatever the, the number that is you, you want to, to choose different URLs. Okay, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to create a measure that's going to direct it to a URL, which is going to be the gray color, which is this color here, if it's fine and below the threshold, and a URL for another image, which is going to be the red color, which is this color here, if it's above a given threshold. So that's going to be the, the approach we're going to use for adding this conditional format in here. Now as an aside, there is an option to add SVGs, which are a specific type of file, and you can ap apply conditional format directly to those. So I will cover SVGs in the next video. This one here, we're going to keep it straightforward and we're just going to create two images and we're going to link to one of these images if it's below a threshold and one of the images if it's above a threshold. Okay, so just to call that out that you can use another approach, but we're not going to cover it today. Okay, so the first step I've done is I've gone into a graphic design tool called Canva. So you can actually pick up a free account here for Canva. I've got canva.com and you can do lots with this. Um, this is a paid version, but I think you can actually get these w without the paid version, so you should be fine. So what I've done with these is I've basically created uh, an icon and I've created this gray color and the red color for each of the icons that I'm going to use, okay? So then I've exported these and I've then uploaded them to our website. Okay, so this is important. The the URL that you are going to use in the, the code to direct the uh, the, UR, uh, the image URL needs to be somewhere which is available to the Power BI service so they can actually go and see that image and, and, and then display it in the visualization. So I've uploaded it to our website. Okay, and we can see here it's a WordPress website here and then I've copied the URL for each one of these and that is going to be the, the URL that we're going to use to 
in, inside the darks code. Okay. Okay, so I'm back in Power BI now and I've created this new measure here called icon underscore envido underscore v1. And I've created a couple of variables here. So the first one is the variable if everything's okay. And that's going to link to this URL here, which has got the the environmental OK image. And then I've done the same for the alert, which is just going to link to the alert image, which is going to be that red, the, the red colored image. And then we're just going to really create a simple if statement. If the backlog hours for environmentally critical work for the latest, so this measure here, is greater than 700, then it's going to be alert. Otherwise, it's going to be OK. So I'm going to go now and I'm going to add in the icon as a reference to this measure here. So I'm going to go back to the cards. I'm going to make sure environment selected. I'm going to make sure that the image URL is selected and then I'm going to go and click on this FX button and then in I'm going to make sure that this is selected field value. Now there is only one option there so you're going to be um, you're going to be fine there and then we're just going to put I'll put V1 because I know that that is what it's called. Here's it here and then I'm going to click OK. Okay, now we can see that it needs to be over, if it's over 700, which we've said here, it's going to display this red icon here. So it's going and displaying this URL here, which is exactly what we want. Now let me increase this to um, 750. And we can see it's now displaying the gray icon because it's not higher than the threshold. So that seems to be working fine. Okay, so we can take it a step further because at the moment we've got this target value embedded into the actual code. Now I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a small table that's got a list of the targets for each of the um, the backlog criticalities. So a target for safety, environment, production and routine. So I'm going to go to home and I'm going to go to enter new data and this is going to allow me to create a table directly inside Power BI. Okay, now you could also use a data source. It could be something in SharePoint. It could be something in Excel. It doesn't really matter. The idea is that we're going to we're going to store the targets in a central location, so that if we can update them in one place, they can cascade to each of the measures that use them. Because we're going to use it in a couple of different measures here. So I'm just going to show you the final result. Okay, so I've created a table here which has got the measure name and the threshold. Okay, so for safety environment, it's it's five each and for production it's 1500 and for routine it's 4000. So that's been created and that's been loaded into the Power BI file as a, as a new table. Now if you want to go and edit this table you simply right click on the table name and we go to edit query and then in source we just double click on the little cog icon here Okay, and that's going to allow us to edit that information there. Now, that's only available if you added the data directly into Power BI. Obviously, if it was linked to an Excel spreadsheet or something in SharePoint or the database, you would need to edit that in the source system. So we're back in our visual here, and I'm just going to add in a new variable here that's going to go and find that target value in the table and bring it back and use that instead of this 750, which has been basically hard-coded into this particular measure. So it means if you're going to change it in one place, you're going to have to change it in all of the different places that, that refer to that target if you want to change it. So we're going to put in here, in fact, we're going to call it threshold. So we're going to use this lookup value option here. And and how it works is, is reasonably straightforward. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the result column name. So if I go back here, this is the actual table that we've got. So the result column name is actually going to be called threshold in the backlog thresholds table. So this is a backlog thresholds table. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say backlog thresholds table and it's the actual threshold value is what I'm looking for. So that's the result column I want. The search column, so let's go and bring up this again, that we're going to search for is going to be this measure column here. Okay, and we want this environmental critical um, value within this search column. But that's a search column, so it's going to be called measure. So let's type in measure here. Backlog threshold measure. So that's a column we're going to search in. And then finally, the, the value that we're going to search for. Now, this is going to be the, the value inside this column, which is going to be backlog hours production critical. Okay. In fact, it's backlog hours environmental critical. Okay, so that's the threshold value that it's going to look for. Next, we're going to go and enter another variable here, 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is in here, we're just going to enter this threshold value here rather than actually that 750. Okay, now we'll just test that. Okay, and we can see there's an issue there, and that's because this value here is incorrectly spelt. So I'll just fix that. Okay, so now we can see that it's highlighted this has been read because the threshold or the current backlog value here is higher than the threshold. Right, so next we're going to go and we're going to go and actually create the same for these ones here. Okay, we're going to add some conditional formatting to these here. So here's the measure I've created here. So it's conditional formatting, backlog hours, environment, critical color. Now I've taken this a little bit of a step further here and we've actually also, as well as look up the target, we're also looking up the, the color. So I've got a little table here that's got a warning color and a critical color and that's the color that I want to actually select. So again, we're baking in some of the ability to change the colors of the, the conditional formatting so that we can define it in one place and see it cascaded to the other locations that use it. Okay, so the first thing we do is we define the actual, the name of the KPI that we're going to search for in the table and that's going to be the table we're going to go and get the, the threshold values from. So I've defined the measure as a variable in its own right as well within this Dax measure here. So we're going to get the target first of all, so we'll cover that in the last section there and then we're going to get look up for the colour as well. So we're going to go and find the colour that's critical in that table and then we're going to feed these into a conditional formatting if statement here. So if the measure is greater than the target, then we're going to use this colour here. Otherwise, we're going to use this colour here. Now, I'm going to just show you this for just now. I did actually explicitly state that it would be either this red colour here or one of these different hues of blue here that we've got. However, what I've done is, I haven't looked at it, I've decided that it's probably too colourful. And the contrast isn't, isn't, a, isn't a that big, actually, and there's quite a lot of different colours here. Now, they were fine if they were just used just to, to accent the different types of criticality, but I think once we're using conditional formatting, it helps if each one of these is just grey. Okay, keep them quite neutral, and then this then stands out if it's an exception and we're using this conditional formatting. So I've actually gone for that option there. So if I go back in here, I've actually left this colour in here, but I've, I've formatted it out. Okay, so what will happen here is if the if it's not, we're going to use this conditional format in, on these um, these accents here. If it isn't this color here, it's just going to defer or revert to the default color. Okay, so let's see that in action. So I'm going to go into the card again. We're going to minimize image, and we're going to go to the accent bar at the bottom here. Just make sure we've got this environment card selected here. And then we can see we've got this option here. Now that's the default color we've got here. So we're going to first of all change that default color. And in fact, I think we can do it for all at the top here. Okay, so the default color there is going to be this gray color here, I think it is. And then we're going to go into this FX here. And we're going to go to field value. And then here I'm going to type in the conditional formatting for environment hours here. Okay, that's the one we just created. Oh, I need to actually select this one here. Okay, so it looks like if you do select conditional formatting for all, and then you override that with one for a specific series here, then this is the one which takes precedent, okay? This is one that's prioritized. So let's go back in here and we'll just add the conditional format in for, for this. And this should be red. Just give it a second. There we go. Okay, so that's now red. So what we've got here is the um, the conditional format I'm working for this based on an, an image, two different images, and for the accent based on a measure that calculates a color, a hexadecimal color code, and then injects that into the accent bar color here. So I'm going to add them in for each one of these and that is the end result that we've got here is this one here. So let's get rid of this and then we'll just start working with this one here. So we've got this here, um, we've added in the, the same for each one of these other ones so that if they actually do exceed the target then we they will, they'll change colour as well. However, we need to know what the target actually is. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go and actually create a dynamic bit of text at the top here that's going to basically display the target for each one of these. So whenever that I put some conditional formatting onto a, a visual, I do like to also display 
the target so you know if you're you're close to the the target above or below how far above or below you are so i'm going to use a sub a sub headline here the subtitle here so i'm going to go into subtitle and i'm going to switch that on and we can see that we've got this string here which is thresholds safety is five environments five productions um 1500 and routine is 4000 so if i open up the subtitle we can see the text is actually been fed by some conditional formatting and if I click on here, we can see it's called Backlog Hour Summary Status. So let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so again, what I've done is I've made this dynamic. So if these numbers change in the actual um, thresholds table, then not only is the conditional format going to change, but the actual or the rules for each of the conditional format are going to change, but the actual text that's displayed in this subtitle is going to change. So we're just going to go and look up the safety critical threshold the environmental critical threshold, etc., etc., and then I'm going to construct a string here, which is going to be threshold and then safety. And now, what I've done here is I've added two spaces in here. Now, I think two spaces just gives it a little bit of extra white space in between each one of these and stops it looking so crowded. Okay, so you can play about with that, but two spaces seem to be good. The other thing I've done here is I've actually created this or wrapped this threshold here in a format string. Now these thresholds, this one's 1500 and this one's 4000. So that's going to make sure that that has got this comma here, which makes it again a nicer user experience and easier to read. So that's um, that's created here as a subtitle. So the next thing I'm going to do is just check to see if we do change the title, if we do change the threshold, if it actually changes in the conditional format as we'd expect. So let's go and we'll do that now. Okay, so I'm back in here now and I'm going to go and go into edit mode by just double clicking on this um, icon here. And we've decided that actually the threshold for safety critical is going to be zero. In fact, we'll put it as one. Okay, and we're going to just upload that back into the, the model. Okay, and it's just loading up here. We can see with this spinning icon here. Okay, so now we can see that this is updated to be safety is one. This is turned red. This is turned red because this is two and it's now above one. So that seems to be working fine. Okay, so hopefully you've got something out of this, a, a, a few ideas about how to manage your KPI or your threshold targets in, a, in, a, in one location, see it cascade through into a card and any visual really, and a few ideas about how to kind of set this up so that the colours have got a, a, a decent contrast there so that we can clearly see these ones that are in, in alert in comparison to the ones that are just fine. Okay, so thanks again for watching. If you found this video useful, it's always great if you could give it a thumbs up. Much appreciated. And also, if you could subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with the latest videos, that'll help me out as well. And it'll keep you up to date with anything I release. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next video.